Hi, my name is Carla Sondheim and welcome to my paper doll tutorial. Um, I just love paper dolls. There's something really fun about them and so I hope you really enjoy this project. What you'll need is a small watercolor set, a watercolor brush, and I like to use a number 12 round, a paper towel, something to mix paint on, and this can be a piece of wax paper or a paper plate, a good piece of watercolor paper. And what I have here is a um, 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. That's a smooth paper. If you don't have that, um, the rough cold press would work as well. You'll also need a pencil, an eraser, and a pair of scissors. So this first step, it's really just a light blocking in of your shapes. And I like to use a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper or something like that that's gonna be a little larger than the actual paper doll. That's so that I don't draw myself into a corner and have to erase a whole lot. I have lots of room to spread out. Plus I'll be using some of the extra parts as scrap paper when I get to the watercolor. Um, but basically I'm just gonna start by lightly sketching in sort of a face shape and a hair shape. I have a neck and some shoulders. And then I am going to actually have her arms folding in on her themselves because if I have them out flying about, um, they will break off a lot easier once we have them in paper doll form. So I'm just gonna lightly block in my hands. And then I'm gonna do my dress. Maybe some feet. Okay. So I'm drawing this a little darker than you might because of the camera. I want it to pick up so you guys can see. But here I have my basic shape, and you notice I'm leaving her face shell features out. That's because I like to do it at the very last step. Um, I like to paint everything first and then add the, the eyes and everything else right at the end. So when you're drawing, uh, keep your hand loose and, um, and just don't worry too much about the lines being perfect. Uh, you can use your eraser as much as you want, although I encourage you not to spend too much time erasing. I think you'll find that um, even though if you don't get the proportions perfectly uh, correct, you're going to like it a lot better anyway. Okay, so I have my, my doll locked in. And now I'm gonna to go to paint. And the first thing I do is I'll use lots of water right here on the palette because um, the way I paint with watercolor is I like to use lots of water, thin transparent layers. So I'm getting some kind of gold color that I have and maybe kind of a pink. And I'm putting just a little more water in there to make sure that it's the color that I want. And that looks pretty good to me. You can use your paper towel to dab off a little water, especially when we get into the smaller areas. But for this first space area, we'll use most of it. And you wanna get the watercolor on all the areas of the skin tone while it's still wet. And I've just now um, taken my brush and patted off a little of the water and I'm just picking up just a little bit here and there um, in areas that it got a little too dark and that should spread, spread out. Now I'm gonna go into the arms. And my feet. Don't worry too much about staying in the lines we're gonna be cutting it out later anyway, so it's okay. And then now um, the face has had about 35 to 45 seconds to dry now, and I'm going to add some cheeks to it. So I've put on my brush some red paint, and while it's still wet, I'm gonna just dot in here like that. And then it spreads out on its own, and um, it dries nicely to make some nice cheeks. If you want to do darker skin, um, 
I usually uh, will just kind of do the same thing. I'll start with my gold and red, and then I'll go in possibly with a little brown and maybe even a little black. And once again, I'll test it to see if it's the color I like. And for some reason, when you use the black watercolor, it wants to streak. So it's really, really important when using a darker uh, color to keep that watercolor really wet. Now, if you get it on and it's not dark enough for you, don't try at this point to darken it. Let it dry and then do a second pass of color on top of it. So I'm going to add her cheeks. And it looks just a little too wet. So I'm going to let it dry just a little bit more. If it's too wet, it'll spread out over the whole face. So then you need to let that dry. Okay, um, now my paper dolls, um, they're completely dry and that means they're cool to the touch. And I'm gonna add some hair to both of them. And I think I'm just going to kind of stick with a simple hairdo on this one. Let that dry completely. We'll go, we'll try some blonde over here. Once again, I like to keep my layers relatively light. I mean, my, my colors and, because you can always add more layers later, but it's hard to take off a, an application that's too thick. So then I need to let this dry completely. Okay, my hair is dry, so now I'm going to put away my paints and grab my pencil again and outline her with darker strokes. And um, I'm not gonna worry about erasing this one. Um, I'm just gonna draw. The reason I'm darkening them this much is we're going to be cutting these out and so there'll be a lot of room uh, where I might cut off a little bit of the line so it's okay to darken them pretty, pretty heavily. back, outline her hair just a little more. And see how loose and sketchy my line is. This means this allows it, um, if you make a mistake, it doesn't show as much. So uh, it's really benefit from that sketchy line. Um, I think I'm gonna put a little crown on her because when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a princess, okay? And now I'm ready to put on uh, her eyes and her facial features. And um, I tend to keep it very simple. It's up to you if you want to be more elaborate or not, but um, I will go in and just do a little dot for an eye there. And I'm looking at it the whole time to make sure that this is where I want to put the pupil. Um, you know, I could put it up here so that she looks a little up, but I think I like it right here. And I already like her expression. And then I usually just put it in a little nose and a little mouth. Um, and uh, 
the smaller the mouth, the more ambiguous the expression. And that works for me because sometimes the dolls are happy and sometimes they're sad. And so um, when it's kind of um, just a, a very subtle smile or almost no smile, then uh, the imagination can fill in the blanks there. Okay. So the next step, and this is optional, but you could use some um, fixative to, and I'm not going to do it here because of the cameras and everything, but some fixative, you could spray it on there and that would keep the pencil from smearing. I'm not going to do it, it's an optional step. Um, and now I'm going to cut. I always find it easier to sort of get the big stuff out of the way first. See, I kind of chopped off my line. I can try to redraw it later. And this is a trick I learned when I was working um, in graphic design. Um, I could go up in between these feet if I want, and definitely with these small little feet, it won't matter too much because they won't break off. But if you decide to do longer legs, go ahead and just cut straight off at the feet and let the background just be white. And again, your eye will sort of just uh, let that fall away. But it keeps your paper doll a lot um, stronger and hardier. Now she looks like she has a cake on her head. <laughs> OK. OK. And I think for this case, I will just do her feet. So now you have um, a nice paper doll to play with. And to, let's see, because I didn't spray it, it smeared a little bit, so I'm going to touch that up a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some backgrounds that I pre-painted, and uh, this way she can be walking in the forest, she can be part of a princess story. Um, anyway, have fun. These original paper dolls um, are meant to be um, little self-portraits, but of course you can do whatever you want. And don't forget animals. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.